Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining me again today for another episode of Interviews, where we meet the people behind the businesses and the brands in South Africa. And today I'm very excited to be introducing you to Suzette Bauer. Suzette, if you will please tell us a little bit more about your business and why you started it. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Melanie. I'm thrilled to be here and I think what you're doing is fantastic. Um, one of the things, if I can start with that, that I discovered at the beginning of the COVID pandemic and lots of time for introspection and spending alone was that I'd like to put it out there for people to think about our purpose. I honestly believe when people are searching for their purpose, our purpose is about learning, failing, making mistakes, dusting yourself back up and passing those learnings on to people as your power to help people get where they want to go faster, easier, smarter. So anybody that thinks they don't have a story to tell or something valuable to give, your life experience is a very valuable story. So I just want to put that out there. So what you're doing is great. Thank you. So my, I go, although my name is Suzette Bauer, I go online by Susie, S-U-Z-E Bauer. And that was part of my journey because in differentiating oneself in this noise and trying to stand up amongst the gurus when you're starting out is to try to be unique. And I was creating a vision board and saw Susie Orman. We all know Susie Orman with her fancy, fancy financial skills and she's got a great profile and looks fab and what a, what a, what a. And I liked the Susie Orman thing. She was on my uh, vision board and I crossed out the Orman and I put Bauer and there I am Susie Bauer so um, and luckily because Suzette is a known name Susie is less known so it is quite unique for an online profile yes so um, Susie Bauer is originally from um, marketing background in the hospitality tourism leisure industry I originally studied market uh, psychology in Cape Town, went from Zim, grew up, was well, born in Zambia, grew up in Zim, studied in Cape Town, went back to Zim, worked for Sadek, opened hotels in Namibia, Mozambique, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and South Africa. So I think um, I'm pretty well qualified as a real Southern African. And in, as I was getting a little bit mature and long in the tooth, I started looking around and seeing all the young, gorgeous things I was competing with in marketing. And let's face it, it's a lot about how you look and how easily you get doors opened. And realized um, it's not so much about plodding the streets anymore as about going online. So mm -hmm. I started my fa Facebook and everything and got onto all the social media platforms in 2010 already. Mm -hmm. And by then that was quite unusual because I was already quite a mature old duck. But the dinosaur was determined not to go extinct. So I started muddling about, I did one of those Get Smarter courses. I was the oldest student by far and struggled along, but came out in the top 10%, which was amazing. And then found an internet marketing guru, internationally American, to study with. And that was probably my most painful journey. So for anybody who's listening to this, culture is very important. Mm -hmm. And I'm not running down what they did, but I am saying, make sure who you choose to hold your hand and lead the way respects your culture, who you are, and the various other little um idiosyncrasies about your life, about your lifestyle, about your capabilities and so on. Because I first of all was made to feel very stupid and very useless. Mm. And in that experience, my business was born. Wow. I was planning to be um, kind of a marketing agency. But because that was such a hard learning experience and it was very painful and it took two years and it should never have taken two years because I had to pick myself up too often instead mm -hmm. of being built up and being helped along, I fell a lot and 
um, got to a very insecure space in my capabilities and my age and all those kind of things. Mm. So I then, as I started finding myself and coming together and finding that I really did have unique skills and coming back to that purpose thing I said, you have to, if you are wondering where your next opportunity lies, dig deep into what you really love to do and what the passion is about. Mm. Because in there, is your unique capability that cannot be replicated Mm. because your life experience, nobody else has had exactly. Mm. So I then started talking to friends and family. And there's another tip. If think about what your friends and family ask your advice about. And a lot of people started finding it very amazing that I was a Facebook, um, very knowledgeable on Facebook. And I was on this platform and that platform, and I was building my own website right up at the beginning my husband has got a passion for classic cars i set him up as part of my learning with a website for the classic cars i started his facebook page and he's now got a full-time business driving classic cars for weddings matric dances and so on Um, and it is 100 percent internet based gets his booking through his website and facebook and off he goes paid to drive his cars so that was my first little test of how easy it is to do to do these stuff and another thing idea pops downloads into my mind is to tell people to remain curious Mm. curiosity is the key to learning now because if you ask the right questions you can find the right answers anywhere Mm. it is so much easier to learn to market to whatever now than when i was mainstream marketing 20 years ago It was tough then to be a marketer, but that, of course, again, gives me great power because I've got 30 years of experience in marketing, which I've now converted into how do we do this online and make it easier, cheaper, faster, and all those kind of things. But my purpose came in realizing that there are lots and lots of people like me who cannot afford to retire or maybe better still, don't want to retire because there's so much life still in them. Mm. Let's face it, 60 is the new 50. Mm. And um, the way young millennials, and sorry for those of you who are watching, you make us feel really stupid because we did not grow up with computers. My first bit of tech was still a telex machine where you got the tape with the little holes. I bet most people who are watching don't even know what I'm talking about. Mm. And there you had to type 100% accurately because you were on this little tape that had to, and I was trading then. So it was prices, it was all sorts of things you had to type into these machines. And then I developed a golf ball typewriter and then a huge big computer. And gosh, my first cell phone was a hell of a thing and it was a big brick. So working through all these ages to what we've got now, it is so easy, but... It is also very easy to be overwhelmed, Mm. to have far too many options to make sense of, Mm. and to go down a rabbit hole and get completely lost, waste time, money, your self-esteem, and all those things. Mm. Mm. So I started a coaching business to help mature entrepreneurs navigate the fastest, safest route to their destination a desired destination Mm. so much so that even right now i'm in the process of creating an e-commerce store for those people who are making beautiful things who are just not like me and not gonna create an online store it's not their passion they don't want to do it they don't want to even know how it works i can see people glaze over when i talk about it so i'm now creating a department store where i can help people sell their stuff and take their beautiful gifts to market. Mm. And I have done workshops where I physically show people how to do Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, all those things. My big passion is creating content. What is good content? Getting people comfortable with talking over a screen, doing Facebook Live, connecting authentically with your face out there. Get over yourself. People aren't as judgmental as you think they are. And it's now, interestingly, Mel, and I'm just loving where it's gone with 
this pandemic, which has really helped me step into my power, but is that my life experience now is about talking courage into people and showing them it's possible. So it's not just saying you can do this, perhaps using all the fancy skills that a life coach does. I actually do it by showing people you can actually do this. Let me show you how easy it is. Mm -hmm. And then with fabulous screen share, being able to show people where to click, how to do, what to do, where to look if things work. So it's become an incredibly rewarding part of my entire life's learning. So that's kind of my story. So here I work from home, see clients from time to time, do lots of coaching online. And um, I think I'm making my own little impact, little drop in the ocean, create big ripples. I'm loving your story. It's so beautiful. I meet so many older people who who feel that they've um, they've just started too late. And because they've started late, there's no way they can catch up with this whole internet thing. And I think you're building an amazing bridge for people like that um, to start getting involved uh, in a sensible way. Yeah, so um, if I may say, um, everybody who can refer me to people is fantastic because my ideal client, my big challenge, is possibly not online yet. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> because they're still scared of Facebook, they're still scared of this, still scared of that. And my first mission is to make them realize it's not a scary place at all, that you can yes. manage it, you can um, optimize your experience, you can see only what you do, what the social media platforms are doing now to help people decide what they want to see is fantastic. I mean, you mm -hmm. can click of a button, go, I don't want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. And let me just check you out a bit. It is just brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think just even just the life skill of being able to put yourself up there and realize that, wow, I can actually do this and I'm not as stupid as I've been made to feel mm. as an in, is incredibly empowering for people and gives you some kind of zest for life and a, a, a great step up to, wow, so what can I actually do with this? And then it becomes a bit of a a bit of a journey and opens people up to possibility. Mm -hmm. I love your insight that we need to be careful about who we ask for help, because if the, the help they're giving us uh, only makes us feel stupid, then it can be counterproductive to the process in, in, a, in a deeply Absolutely. disturbing way. You know, I've even started when one of my trainings is about helping people identify their ideal customer. Mm. And it, again, is so easy now with online because you go snooping people, you go checking where they communicate, where they hang out, what they like to talk about and stuff. And the first step in that process for me is why are you doing it? So your why, starting with, I'd love to use Simon Sinek stuff. If some people don't know about Simon Sinek, go and look because he says, start with your why mm. before you get to the how and the what. Mm. Why are you doing things? And if it's totally comfortable within your own value system and your conscience and makes your soul sing. The rest just flip and happens and it's mm. just fantastic. Mm. So when you choose somebody to guide you, to teach you, to help you and indeed choose customers, there should be a fit. Mm. It should feel good. Mm. I'm lucky enough and maybe it's because I'm a little bit down the line, but I rely on my intuition when I meet somebody. And if my little man on my shoulder taps me and says, this ain't feeling right, mm. I extricate myself because mm. I'm learning to trust my soul and my intuition knows what is right. Mm. Mm. And I urge people who are starting out or not sure to try and do that. I know I sound a bit uh, geeky and uh, woo-woo and stuff and witchy maybe or whatever you want to call it, but just to sit quietly and evaluate how it feels mm. is a great barometer to what is right for you and what is not right for you. Mm. And if I put myself back into that step when I signed up and for a lot of money, it was American dollars in 2004. And um, I, I, I really had post-purchase depression of note. 
and mm. I did have 30 days to pull out and I should have pulled out mm. and I wasn't listening to my intuition. Mm. Mm. It is, it is what probably the biggest tip I can give people today is if it feels fabulous, go with it. But if there's something that is not feeling right, listen and tune into it and maybe look for other options. There are so many people now coaching in every single place in the world. Mm. Meet them, talk to them and do your research online. Go mm. and see what reviews. I mean, 94% of people now buy after researching reviews. Mm. People are not getting reviews, starting with family and friends. Mm. Get them to review your stuff because the chances are they'll either be um, too kind or be brutally honest. Mm. Choose those ones who are brutally honest. Get reviews out there. Get people to see you out there so people can decide if they like you or not. Mm. And don't get rejected by rejection. Not mm. everybody likes everybody. That mm. is the way it is. And there's a lot of choice. So tribal marketing is my thing. Go with your tribe. Go with people you connect with. Look for your niche where you know you're going to add value. You're going to feel like a proper social network, a book club or a whatever, that's where you do your business. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that a lot of new entrepreneurs often feel that um, with a need to grow a small business, they have to take in all business that comes along. But sometimes I know in my own experience, customers have come along who I've, I've not necessarily felt comfortable with dealing with and, and I've done their business anyway because I needed the money. Uh, what would you say to those entrepreneurs? Yeah, it's a difficult one. And I've had many, many of those. And they generally end up with a bit of heartache. But sure, you, you have to do it. But probably my biggest learning is to set boundaries. Very clear boundaries. Because mm. those are generally the people who will try to take advantage of you. Mm. Who will not treat you with the respect you deserve. So things like that, and perhaps you do have to experience one or two more difficult clients to understand what your boundaries are. Because when you're starting out, you often don't know what your boundaries are. But mm -hmm. time is probably the most important thing from an entrepreneur. Because sadly, we are most of us selling our time because we're starting off as solopreneurs and we only have so many hours in the day. Mm. You have to... Be clear on what it costs you to do a job and how long it costs you to do a job. And whilst I am, and it's one of the talks, one of the coachings I do is to try to stop people costing their time, mm -hmm. but quote by task. You know how long it takes. So you don't quote by hour, you quote by task, but you need to know how long the task takes. Mm -hmm. And you need to make it clear to people what is involved, and how much you're prepared to give and where you charge extra. And always a contract, an agreement of some sort, especially with a service level um, agreement, to say, this is what I do and this will be extra. I will give you up to so many hours of work, so you're not quoting by hour, per month up mm -hmm. to between so and so and so and so, so they can't work out exactly what your hourly rate is, and the rest will be charged at so much. Mm -hmm. And... Here's the best advice. If it is a difficult relationship, do not do any favors. Mm. That sounds terrible, but it's true. Mm. The minute you start doing favors, you get taken for granted. Mm. Mm. So stick to the brief in the nicest possible, most professional way and refer them back to the contract. Make it quite clear. We have those clients who we will go to the end of the world for. But if it feels right, it is right and that the, the doors will open in other ways. Mm. But those difficult ones are generally the ones that take you for granted, diminish your worth and left you feeling slightly shortchanged. Mm. So mm. boundaries, 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 what you will accept in terms of the way you are communicated with. Mm. Um, you know, my contract, for example, says I will only talk on an email you may contact me on a private WhatsApp group, but you can not assume I've seen it until you see two blue ticks mm. and I have responded to you. Mm. I might have seen it and read it, but that does not mean I've, re I've, 
I'm actioning it. I need to respond. Mm. Because assumptions is probably the most dangerous thing to make. Mm. So again, maybe a tip is not to assume. Yes. Be very clear in an understanding, setting up things very, very professionally right from the get-go. Yes, yes. Wow, you are sharing such awesome wisdom today for our people watching. I really appreciate, appreciate this very much. Now, earlier in the chat, you mentioned that um, new entrepreneurs very often feel a sense of overwhelm and then find themselves going down rabbit holes. What are the most common rabbit holes that you see people going down? Thinking, learning is going to, learning and doing it yourself is the fastest way. Because your, as we've just discussed, your time has value. Mm. And only until you've been down a rabbit hole, met Alice, had lunch with the Mad Hatter and worked your way back up, you realize the clock didn't stand still and you lost a whole week mm. in your time which meant you didn't do what you're good at. Mm. You didn't do what your core purpose, your core product, knowledge, service, whatever is. And that week of time could probably have been done by paying somebody who's a professional to us to do the same thing for you. Mm. Mm. Honestly, that is my most important thing. And it especially, especially refers to a once off task. Okay. That's probably where it's most important. Something that you're not going to keep replicating. So, for example, building a website. If you are building a website to market your own business as opposed to teaching people how to do WordPress or being like me, a marketing coach, I built my own website. I will never do it again. Mm -hmm. But I can now tell people what to watch out for, what to look out for. Generally, I meet my client's webmaster with them to help them brief because I understand the traps and the problems and the issues and I can see beyond. Mm. I, on my e-commerce course I'm doing right now, a lot of what I'm doing is understanding and I'm asking very significant deep questions because I know my coach can see where I can't see yet. Yes. So asking for advice for people who are ahead of you because they can see stuff you're not seeing yet because you're in your space. Mm. And as I say, that important point of if you're not going to replicate the job, give it to somebody else to do in, in a tenth of the time you will to learn the process, make the mistakes, come back and relearn because you will make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So building a website, um, maybe doing logos, doing those kind of things is very good outsourced. But content generation, writing your own stuff, um, doing your own live broadcast, those kind of things are somebody third party cannot do better for you. Mm. Mm. People Absolutely. cannot replic replicate who you are, your authenticity and your personal brand. I don't care what any agency says to me. You mm. are who you are. And as I've said, people are attracted to authenticity. There's far too much hiding behind fancy words and um, animated videos and big wow stage shows and what 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 when people actually buy from people mm, mm, absolutely those are great insights now i've i've spoken to a lot of people who have kind of approached me and said they'd like to do these videos with me and then when it comes to the crunch they chicken out because they're terrified what advice would you give to to people who are just too afraid to do lives and video and that kind of thing just do it already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, like most of these online things, you it's impossible to test it unless you do it. Mm. And until you physically put yourself out there on screen, you cannot see how you do. Mm. And the biggest safety net I can give people is, guess what? People are not as critical as you think they are. Mm. You are your own worst judge you are the only one who's going my hair looks bad today because you know what it looked like yesterday mm -hmm. the people who are watching you haven't got a clue what you look like yesterday or what you're going to look like tomorrow mm -hmm. and it's about oh this is a maya de angelo's expression a uh, famous quote it's about how you make them feel mm -hmm. not about how you look 
So if you are really connecting, you're coming across as fun, educational, genuine, um, and all um, authority, knowledgeable, all those things. That's what people are listening to. They're too busy listening to sit going, oh God, she looks a bit bad. I don't know if I like those earrings. People don't <laughs> do that. And we think they do. You know what I mean? So, yes. um, but one very, very good way to get over the initial fear is to grab your phone, put it on camera, put it on video, selfie, hold it up in front of yourself and talk and introduce yourself start with your elevator pitch who what do you do who do you help how do you help what transformation do you deliver mm. put that on video and watch it and go okay so i really do look like i've got a double chin in which case you make sure you hold it up mm. um oh dear my eyes don't look very good well let me fix that once you've looked at those and you've overcome those little things this is exactly what the, that is it's just talking to somebody. And after a while, once you get into your zone and once you get into talking, you don't even look at yourself. You don't even know what you look like. Mm -hmm. So maybe one or two little practices on a video on your phone in selfie mode. And then literally it's just talking about who you are, what you do and what you deliver and the transformation you bring. That is such valuable learning. Thank you so much. You've you've really, really been very generous with your knowledge today, Suzette. I love uh, doing this. So you could have me on here for an hour. You're going to have to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's a win-win for everybody. So I'm going to keep going. Um, and, and I would love to speak to you again, maybe moving forward to maybe do another video where we can chat specifically about uh, certain things. Um, well, since we're doing this on Zoom and you're a great interviewer, um, we can maybe do a group thing and get people in to talk about challenges and maybe have a bit of a group chat and do a Q&A or something because that often is so valuable. People mm -hmm. want to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I was on one this morning. Um, where people have the most interesting questions to ask. And it's only after a while they feel comfortable to ask them. You know, people mail in and say, ask questions in advance. Mm. And people don't because they think their question's stupid. Yes. And once yes. other people get the ball rolling and you start asking a few questions and stuff, people go, okay, I, I, I'm safe to ask this now. Yes. And often there is the breakthrough for those who are not answering the question or it hasn't cropped up for yet or whatever. So yes. Q&A is a great way to break barriers also and get people to get take the next step. Yes, absolutely. So once we finish this this interview, I'm definitely going to chat with you further about that. Super. So what so, are yeah, your, um, what are your people, sorry, yeah, carry on. What are your biggest challenges in your business? Um definitely uh trying to help people who can't afford to pay for my services. And there I have to bite the bullet because I believe my purpose isn't just helping people overcome those initial barriers. Mm. And I, I actually offer a free breakthrough consultation for two people for half an hour just to get people to see. I had a lady on this week who was very, very aggressive across the screen. Mm. But she wants to be a coach. Mm. And I'm a tough coach too, because I just said to stop right there. Mm. If you're going to carry on being angry, you are never going to connect with people. Mm. You have to do your own work first. And we ended up the interview with her realizing she's got to do a lot of her own stuff and get her own stuff right before she can take the next powerful step, which she knows she's going to take, and I know she's going to take. Mm. But there's work to do before she can get there because her stuff is not going to be authentic. Mm. Mm. So that little half an hour I deliver is free and takes a lot of my time because generally it goes beyond half an hour. But right now, the power is in doing that. Mm. So somehow, as we discussed with monetizing YouTube earlier, is one's got to learn how to monetize that. And it might very well end up in a book, in a journal, in a something, because I'm more and more realizing that I can give people courage and, and motivate them to take the next step. So maybe 
there's a business opportunity there and I'm becoming very open-minded in terms of listening for the next opportunity and, mm. and doing my inspiration in the morning and trying to find what it's about. But mm. what I did allude to earlier was my biggest challenge, and I am a marketer, is reaching my ideal customer because they are not in the traditional marketing places where I can talk to them and make them realize I can help. Mm. Mm. So, uh, word of mouth is kind of the way I have to rely on marketing. And in the old days, networking was very, very effective for me because mm. I met people in networking now. Not those people who were networking are not sitting in Zoom groups and Zoom chats and Facebook groups. Yes. So, right now, that is definitely my biggest challenge. Yes. And um, I think it's quite a unique situation and possibly quite unique to our region because the rest of the world, everybody's on a social media of some sort. Mm. Mm. And South Africa, the mature market is very slow on the uptake. Mm. 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 Why do you think that is? Fear of tech. Okay. okay. Connectivity and data cost probably yes. adds to it. Yes. People are more and more restricted now with money mm. and you know, spending a lot of time on data is is maybe a tricky one. So I'm actually just mulling it over in my head as we speak. But I would think those things are are good reasons. Mm -hmm. But then one of the marketing people I um, trained with for a bit, social media um, guru in the States, the lady called Sandy Krakowski, made the very valid point of the very active sharing audience on um facebook is 37 to about 47 35 mm -hmm. to 47 so those are the people who are opinion makers who are sharing who are watching content and so on and those are the people who would tell their parents about somebody like me yes yes <clears throat> excuse me so um you know there is an opportunity there but my thing is, I'm just putting myself out there and hoping that energies work and I attract the right people in the right places. I'm starting uh, vision board workshops now live at a local art shop and hoping that will get more people in physically with yes. our social distancing and creating a creator space where people can feel safe and, and meet and socialize. I think, I think I'll connecting is a very different world now and we've got to think about how we can connect with people out of the space we absolutely have to nail connecting through the screen yes but creating another way where people can still meet people is yes. is a very very important task for all of us that have a reason to bring people together yes and and i suspect that uh, post covid um, when the whole scare is finally is kind of wound itself down, which which will likely still be another year or two in the making, but when it does happen, that um, people are going to almost be more inclined to meet and connect because there's there's been this desert of connection, of real you know connection. What, I think people are going to lose the skill. Okay. Of okay. That's my fear, honestly. I'm even the other day I did a talk with we are calling the babies of now and the young generation of now the coronials as opposed to the millennials. <laughs> and, um, how are the coronials going to communicate on a one-on-one -on -one basis yes. without texting and images and TikTok videos and stuff? You know, um, for me, my training I said earlier was in psychology originally, and I'm, I'm very, possibly the power of the way I interpret stuff is that that underlies my marketing and the understanding of consumer behavior. Mm. And the fact that people are growing up are going to, over two years, definitely get very used to not connecting. Mm. Mm. You know, one of the biggest barriers to networking a year ago was actually getting yourself into a networking environment, introducing yourself to somebody and trying to start a conversation. We were training people on how to network in a physical capacity. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, you know, that's again, opportunity in two years time. But mm -hmm. I think people are gonna communicate in a very different way and I'm probably gonna have to be taught to communicate in a very different way. Mm -hmm. So we're in a very interesting world and um, 
all I can say is you have to connect in whatever possible way. Um, one of my clients is a gifting client. She does gifting. And um, the message we put behind her gifting social media is if you can't see people face to face, mm. a message and a gift is possibly one of the nicest things you can do. Mm. Mm. I, mean, I had a birthday a couple of weeks ago and a new friend, I met a friend of a friend, sent me a gift by courier. You know, to this day, it still gives me a lump in my throat because it was the most thoughtful thing anybody could do. Yes, yes. So thinking of ways to keep in touch, to connect, um, sending special messages to people and so on is absolutely so important. And I come back to intuition. If intuition says to you, I need to send so-and-so a message, please do it. Mm. Mm. because the universe knows what's going on and um, we don't know where people are going to be, what they're going to be doing, what people need from you, respond to those prompts. Mm -hmm. I love and the that. more you do that, the more people are also going to remember you for the kindness. Yes. Absolutely. And when they need help, when they need support, for me, certainly, you know, little, I've got a great tip. One of my other friends of a friend has got a uh, a small business, um, Reiki, massage, those kind of things. And he very cleverly said to me, I do not miss a client or a connection's birthday on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Think mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all get those notifications that it's somebody's birthday. Mm -hmm. Do you, does anybody watching respond to those? Mm -hmm. Every single one send a nice message? God help us, it takes two minutes to reply to one. Mm. And yet the impact on the other side is phenomenal. I didn't know so-and-so was watching. I didn't know they cared. Um, I can't believe they took the time. Mm. The impact of those tiny, tiny little things is so important now. Mm. And then this conversation started post-COVID. Post-COVID, you will still have those relationships in place. Mm. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. So what do you love most about what you do? Being creative, it's, my, it's possibly my biggest waste of time because I love creating content and um, a lot of, there are a lot of new social media marketers who because computers and them together were the only things they could do in lockdown, um, there's a hell of a lot of people producing content and a lot of content out there. So it's a very competitive space. And my time is not really worth what people are charging right now for social media content, mm. but I love to create content. Mm. So that is what I enjoy most. My actual favorite waste of time, which I'm about to turn into business is adult coloring. Okay. I find it the most relaxing, happy space. I put on beautiful music and color away to my heart's content and a friend gave me a wake up call and said, gosh, how can you afford to waste time like that? And this might resonate for people. Um, and it sort of knocked me off my little perch for a couple of days. And I totally eschewed that little shelf of coloring stuff and thought I cannot waste time like this. And then I thought, how can I turn this into a business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because what you love to do is a gift mm. it's it, it makes your soul sing for a reason mm. and that is a very very good place to think for anybody who's watching right now that doesn't have has lost their main source of income even if you are just making earrings or you are planting seedlings or any of that stuff i mean if you love to garden mm. go and drop a little slip in everybody's box in the street and say I, um, do you need somebody to come and prune your garden? Mm. Mm. You know, if something makes your soul sing, there is something in it that can be a gift. And um, so, yeah, that is looking for opportunity for people. So finding people who contact me to say, um, I love doing this, this and this, but I'm not clever enough to put it out there. Mm. Finding that 
route and plotting that route and taking people by the hand down that route is possibly what I love most. I love that. I love that. And you know, you're talking to the girl who doesn't think that color is ever a waste of time. Oh, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. So you see, we, we connect on, on something. <laughs> in the first place i'm sure it lights up the yeah. brain yeah. <laughs> just such a treat. so suzette it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today you have shared so much wisdom that i'm sure will help so many people who are going to watch this uh, if they would like to connect with you online where can they find you so as i said suzy as in s-u-z-e and leave off the tip um, Susie Bauer is my handle on Facebook, um, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, everywhere. On Instagram, it's just got an underscore between Susie and Bauer. But also, if you search my famous um, business name, Red Matchstick, which is all about igniting passion, igniting marketing, igniting creativity, that's what it's about. So search Red Matchstick. And my website is redmatchstick.com. So pretty easy to find me. I'm pretty well everywhere. <laughs> okay. And I will definitely be sharing all your links and your contact information in the description of this video when I upload it. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. And thank you to everybody who's listened. And I really hope that was inspiring because you know what? You can do something really profound if you just believe in yourself. Oh, I know you've inspired me today. So I'm sure you're going to be inspiring others. Thank you so much for your time. It was a real gift speaking to you. My pleasure. You're most welcome. Thank you.